Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. The Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects said that it has referred five real estate projects to the Judicial Committee for the Settlement of Stalled Real Estate Projects. The Deputy Prime Minister and Head of the Ministerial Committee, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, said that the decision was taken after the Ministerial Committee reviewed the projects individually through an inventory of obligations and rights and access to all data, information and relevant documents. Sheikh Khalid stated that Bahrain, which is a state of institutions and law under the leadership of His Majesty the King and through the efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa is keen on protecting the rights and interests of individuals in all cases and by all means especially legal ones which has proven the integrity of the government's approach in dealing with stalled real estate development projects. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, stated that the expansion of a veterinary quarantine project in Buri has begun. He noted that the Ministry aims to develop veterinary quarantines and ensure their compliance with approved requirements and standards which stems uh, for its keenness on following up on the import and export of cattle, providing the required health care and ensuring that they are free from epidemic infectious diseases. Khalaf noted that Bahrain has imported over 156 thousand head of cattle in 2020, an increase of over 30,000 in 2019, which requires the development and expansion of veterinary quarantines in Buri to accommodate this increase of imported animals. He noted the adoption of the expansion strategy by opening new markets for import in accordance with the food security strategy in Bahrain. Bahrain strongly condemned the offensive statements made by the Lebanese foreign minister in the caretaker government, Cherb al Wahbi, during a television interview against Saudi Arabia, its people, and the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council. The Foreign Affairs Ministry stressed that these statements are inconsistent with basic diplomatic norms and contradict the fraternal relations that bind the people of the GCC states with the brotherly Lebanese people. In response to these offensive statements, the Foreign Affairs Ministry summoned the Lebanese ambassador to, of Bahrain and handed him an official protest note that included the kingdom's rejection and denunciation of the offensive statements made by the Lebanese Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates. The governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, the CBB, Rashid Al Maraj, said that with regard to criminal cases for which final rulings have already been issued, as well as those that are still being examined by courts regarding the banks that have been involved in money laundering crimes, the funds belonging to those banks were previously seized in accordance with judicial decisions issued by the public prosecution. And the seizure will continue until the dismissal of all cases related to those banks. The governor of the CBB affirmed that Bahrain attaches tremendous importance to combating money laundering and taking the necessary measures to maintain trust in the Bahraini banking system. The General Secretariat of the Council of Representatives revealed statistics on the third session of the fifth legislative term. The statistics show that 935 topics have been discussed, over 200 questions have been posed by representatives to ministers and other officials, and 256 decrees, draft laws and recommendations were looked into over the course of 31 meetings. The statistic also shows that 233 proposals were discussed, along with 110 draft laws and 13 decrees. It's states said that the third session of the fifth legislative term witnessed 466 proposals, three requests for general discussions, three requests for a parliamentary investigations and carrying out committee formation two discussions of reports conclusions, an examination of the National Audit Office report and one constitutional amendment. The Arab Interparliamentary Union held an extraordinary meeting on Israel's assaults in Palestine in which the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas was present. During the meeting, the Speaker of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, Adel Asumi, affirmed that the occupied city of Jerusalem has witnessed serious developments that include an increasing number of Israeli violations against the Palestinians and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. He said that the occupation forces have increased their aggression against the Palestinian people through its ongoing bombardment of Gaza 
Gaza and the deliberate targeting of civilians there, martyring hundreds and wounding thousands. He said that the Arab Interparliamentary Union is keen on mobilizing diplomatically to support the Palestinian cause, to end Israel's crimes with immediate effect and offer protection to the Palestinian people. The Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, in coordination with the Traffic Directorate at the Ministry of Interior, announced that the installation of electrical cables on Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Al Sabah Highway near Sitra requires the closure of one of the two lanes on stages on both directions. The closure will be effective from four nights from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. starting Saturday. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 announced that members of the Ministry of Health's Vaccination Committee have agreed to the vaccination of adolescents aged 12 to 17 with two doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. The decision was made after the committee studied all the recommendations issued by the WHO Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization and the U.S. Center for Disease Control to ensure adolescents strengthen their immunity against the virus. The task force Force noted that the opening of the vaccination registration for adolescents will be announced soon, adding that an approval from a guardian is needed when visiting the healthcare centers, in addition to the presence of a guardian when taking the vaccine. It also announced the opening of registration for a booster COVID-19 vaccine dose for the most vulnerable groups in Bahrain at least six months after taking the second dose of the Sinopharm vaccine for first responders, as well as citizens and residents above the age of 50, as well as those suffering from obesity, low immunity or other underlying health conditions. The task force indicated that registration for the booster dose will be available through the Ministry of Health's website by clicking on register for booster doses within the registration option. It also affirms its commitment to further developing the Kingdom's vaccination protocols in accordance with international medical protocols and that providing booster shots is a part of the proactive steps taken by Bahrain in its efforts to combat COVID-19 and contribute to safeguarding the health of the community. The task force emphasized that the opening of registration for taking the booster shot for the rest of the citizens and residents will be announced at a later stage, as the date of the booster shot will be 12 months after taking the second dose to ensure the maximum benefits possible. It concluded by noting the procedures for arrivals from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal and Sri Lanka in Bahrain, including transit travelers aged 6 and above. Travelers arriving from the aforementioned countries must present a negative PCR test result certificate containing a QR code no later than 48 hours before the departure time. The task force added that they must also conduct a PCR test upon arrival, a second PCR test for those who will stay in Bahrain for a period for of more than five days, and a third PCR test 10 days after the date of arrival for arrivals who will stay in Bahrain for a period of more than 10 days. In addition, passengers arriving to Bahrain from the aforementioned countries should also quarantine in their own residence or at one of the hotels designated for a precautionary quarantine license by the National Health Regulatory Authority for a period of 10 days. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 855,529 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 651,346 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 16,793 with 1,342 recoveries and 1,968 registered new cases as well as five deaths. 634 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 1,323 are contacts of active cases and 11 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.